What's up guys? Not Max here, it's the other guy. That's right. Max is away for work, so I'm gonna be doing a bit of work. In the old nugget. Uh, we've had some packages arrive, a bit of gear, so we've got our lifter buckets, rod bolts, main bolts, and uh, the cam. Cam timing gear, springs, and what I'm gonna get started on is, this is the training upgrade. So that's the first thing I'm going to get started on. Uh, as Max said, we have covered this once before with the Land Cruiser build, but uh, uh, there's a lot of new viewers who probably didn't see that. So I'm going to cover it, but only real quickly, and I'm not going to bother covering stripping the heads and things like that. So I'll just give a basic sort of real quick rundown on exactly what we're doing as we do it. So I'm just going to get a bit better set up and get stuck into it. Okay, so we've got ourselves set up here. Now, press happening. Um, I've just done a couple already, just to get a bit of practice, because it's been a while. I didn't want to uh, make an idiot of myself on camera. So, uh, as you can see, these this is what the old trunnions look like. They are pretty simple. They're just a thin cage with needle rollers. And as you can see, once you pull them apart, these needle rollers scatter. And that is the problem that if they do that inside your motor, these little rollers go everywhere and they are very hard steel. They make a massive mess of things. So I've already pressed a couple out. I'll just show you how we go about doing this. So pretty straightforward, got the press set up. That's the pressing out ring from the tool kit. That's the rod used to push them out. Um, there is a bit of an issue with it. Uh, I have found when you first get them, they are that 7 16 diameter. As you can see, the rockers have this bit of a flat side in the top of the cage. When you try and push them through, uh, it does actually damage the cage. And it's not that big of a deal, except that it just makes the tool a pain in the ass to get out of it. So I've just turned down one end of it so that it's a nice easy fit through here just for pressing these sides out. Then when we go to press the new ones in, I'll just turn it back up the other way and I'll, uh, I'll show you how to push them back in. So I'll just put the camera down, get this set up and just do a quick demonstration on how you actually press these out to start with. So I know it's pretty hard to see, just being here on my own, this is about as close as I can get with the camera. Uh, that thick ring there is the pressing out ring. Just goes on the bottom side of the rocker. Just gives a space basically to push that out. And the rod pretty much just goes on that uh, trunnion arm like that. Sit that there. And we just come down with the press. They're not pressed in that hard. Um, I'm not even going to use a handle on the press, you can literally just use your hand and that'll just push the arm out of the top like that. So that's right out. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but the needle bearings have just popped out the bottom of that cage there. So, once we pick this up, I just try to pick it up carefully and keep the needles in there just to make things a bit cleaner. But as you can see, that's the bottom cage. It's actually pushed out the inner race uh, as well. So that's actually what uh, both sides of the race look like when they're together. If you pull the center race out, that's your needle bearings, uh, needle rollers in there. So now that that's done, you just turn it back up the other way insert the tool back in and pretty much just rinse and repeat the process same thing only need basically just hand pressure on the press and it's done and that's it that's the rocket arm with no trunnion in it so I'll press the rest of them out and 
I'll just do a quick demo on how you press the new ones in. So this is our new setup to press the Trunnion upgrade into the rocker arms. Um, note that I've actually had to put some little spaces right under the back side of the irons here just to get it really nice and level. Um, you need it to be as square as possible when you press in the bushes. So for each setup you'll have two bushes and a trunnion arm, your two installation washers and just set the press up with no pins or anything like that. So I'll try and get this best I can as it goes in. So first step is to get one of your bushes. They're the same both sides, doesn't matter which way in they go. And just need to try and get that nice and square. That under the press. And it just goes in flat one side. Again, it's not a heap of pressure. It's just, I've just got this by hand, no tools, just until it's flat on the rocker. And release it. You do get a little bit of swarf, I find, no matter how square you try and get that. So, we just clean that out. That's our first side. Um, so, the next stage, you set your installation washer there. Your training arm fits through that way and just sits in that installation washer. It basically just acts as a spacer. To get your second one started, just uh, just with the press on top like so. And basically press that down till you feel it bind up just on the top of the uh, trunnion arm there. And just release it a bit. That's where your second washer comes in. You just need to be real careful here. It needs to be centered so that the pin can fit through the middle. It's usually not too hard to get it right. And just a bit of pressure. And just make sure it's all the way home. And done. And that's it. That's a training upgrade installed. Solid bushes, no needle rollers to go scattered through your motor. And you just need to make sure the next step is actually to put some circlips on there just to keep everything nice and secure and you just need to make sure you install them the right way when you put them back on the motor. So the last step is just to install the circlips on the ends of the trunnion arm. I've moved to the relative comfort of this here bench, sort of languishing in the corner in the shadows. It's pretty straightforward, same as any other circlip. The hardest thing I found was just finding some circlip pliers small enough to suit these, which is these weird uh, pretty nasty um, adjustable ones but they'll do the job and it's just yeah one circle of each side uh, pretty straightforward so one and two and that's it that's the trunnion upgrade so that's our trunnion upgrade uh, upgrade Let's try that again. That's the trunnion upgrade completed. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward, honestly. It's just a very monotonous and repetitive process. It's really boring, but it needs to be done. Um, it's still, honestly, for me, coming from a background in like small block Chevs and Holdens and stuff like that, like Gen 1 small blocks, the, you know, the OGs, uh, that the, uh, obviously the, Gen, where the precursor for the Gen 3 and later LS designs actually share a lot of uh, very similar architecture. Um, one of the first things you do when upgrading the valve train in a, a Gen 1 is basically toss the stamp steel rockers in the bin and you get the heads machined for studs and put roller rockers on them. Once you do this training upgrade to LS rockers, however, uh, there's absolutely no need to go to roller rockers at all. These factory rockers have been, uh, like, they have no problem going well past four-figure horsepower figures and 
uh, like over 7,000 RPM, even with big cams and big spring rates and things like that, they still have no problem, which is honestly still pretty amazing to me. So these are pretty much ready to go. They've got all of their circlips, they're all done. Uh, they'll just get a final uh, wash and clean before they go on the motor and make sure we get all of that uh, nasty swarf and, and silly stuff off them. So uh, next thing I'm gonna look at is probably uh, stripping these heads ready for uh, valve lapping and have a look at the seats and guides and make sure they're all good. So we'll get stuck into it. It's about nine o'clock at night now. Uh, it's starting to get on a bit, but I'll persevere for a little bit longer and just keep get a little bit more progress done tonight. And uh, that means tomorrow we've got a bit of shopping to do and we'll uh, try and get some more done. Hopefully have these heads back together tomorrow night. Uh, it's Tuesday night now, so Max is working. He's gonna be back on Thursday. So Max is bringing rings, bearings, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all that fun stuff. So I sort of wanna be as ready as we can to start putting the bottom end back together because there's a lot of uh, dummy fitting, measuring, checking bearing clearances, stuff like that. It takes a fair bit of time. So we don't wanna be uh, mucking around with the top end later try and get the stuff done and we'll be good to go all right guys it's wednesday afternoon had some stuff to do this morning so we've uh, had a bit of a later start than we uh, normally would just gonna i'm only going to quickly run through this is uh sort of reconditioning uh the heads so i've already started on this one here uh, i'm just going to show you real quick sort of the, the process for doing this one uh, so as you can see Pulling these apart, the intake seats are not too bad. Might be hard to see on the camera, but there's a, a lot of pitting around the seat on the exhaust. And you can see that exhaust valve. Don't know if it'll focus on it, but there's pitting around that valve there. So the idea is that we want to clean both of them up. And the result we end up with is something like this. So you can see that seat's nice and shiny and clean. That pitting is gone. And We've dressed that valve up real nice. So this head here, uh, with those seats cut and the valves done is ready to be lapped, which I'll show a bit later. We're not going to grind uh, the intake valves or seats because they are clean enough that they'll just lap up. So we're just gonna leave them alone. So first thing I'll show is just how to dress up the valve on our valve refacer. So this is the valve refacer, stone wheel, cutting the seat. This one's already set at the seat angle, 45 degrees. Uh, you've got the stone that spins. Uh, so. And it also turns the valve at the same time. So all you do is just sweep it across the stone and it just dresses up uh, that seat. So there it is, nice clean valve. That one actually took quite a bit of grinding to get some of the deeper pits out of it. Uh, most of them don't actually require that much, but that'll do the job. And you just repeat that for every single valve. It's pretty straightforward. So the process for dressing the seats is fairly similar. Uh, I've got a pilot here and just a dressing stone. 
Uh, this one's only just big enough. We are running short on stones at the moment. Uh, essentially, your pilot just needs to be the same size as the uh, valve stem. It goes in the guide. That's it's in there. Got your drill, and basically you just drive the stone to grind the uh, grind the seat. So as again, that seat or that stone surface, sorry, is dressed at a 45 degree angle, the same as the seat we're trying to cut. So there we have dressed valve seat. Might be a bit hard to see on camera, but there's just a little bit of a line right at the top of the seat that that stone is not quite reaching. It's because it's just not, it is just a little bit undersized. Uh, I did check before on the other head, it's not gonna bother us too much because these valves seem to be lapping up with the seat surface more towards the top side of the, the seat there. Uh, so it'll still be, it'll still be just fine. So I'll just come back to this other head here and just show you the sort of the final step here is lapping the valves. Got valve grinding paste and your valve lapping tool. Just a little bit of, little bit of paste on the seat. We're just using a coarse grade here. Uh, I'd normally spray just a little bit of lube on there as well. It's pretty straightforward. Valve just goes in the head. Uh, this is why we try and keep each valve with the cylinder that it goes with in the right port. And it's just a, if that'll grab properly, like it should. Just a quick lap. And what we are looking for it's making contact all the way around, that's good. Uh, same on that seat there, so what you find, whereas the valve before was really nice and shiny from where we dressed it, once you start to lap them, they go that bit dull, and that's what we're looking for. So we can see here, well I can, you might not be able to, that, that nice dull area it just has a couple of thin spots in it. Uh, so I would keep lapping this until we get a really nice even line all the way around the valve. And once you do that, you clean it up and it's good to go. Reassemble heads. So a bit later in the afternoon, just putting these heads back together. I'm sort of just rushing through this because we have covered it all. I'm just giving the basics. So these are the new valve stem seals that came with the Camtech and PIC springs and such. New retainers and new locks. These are a one piece seal, they're slightly different to the standard LS ones, uh, which are actually a two piece. So these act as a valve stem seal and also the seat for your spring. So these are the new springs installed on the other head. Really nice looking spring. They are a dual, not a beehive, which is, uh, which is good. And uh, that's pretty much the reassembled head, more or less uh, ready to go, just with a final, final wipe down of that head gasket sur uh, surface before it goes back on. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna continue. I'll get this other head back together, the Sabo, and uh, we'll start on some other stuff. Uh, but yeah. Um, I suppose one thing I should mention is uh, installed heights for springs. When you get springs, you'll get the specs on them. So installed, so that's 155 pounds of seat pressure at an installed height of 1.8. So your installed height is the distance from the base of the spring basically to the bottom of the retainer there. So where that can change is when you do something like this and you grind your valve seats, it actually uh, takes some material off the head and lets the valve uh, sit higher in the head. So these are actually at an installed height of 1.85 instead of 
All that means is it'll be slightly lower on the seat pressure because the spring's a bit taller. It's not going to bother this combo because this thing's already got plenty of seat pressure at 155 for the size of can. So it's not going to bother it. And we're more interested in, as long as these are all fairly consistent and they are, uh, we're pretty happy with that. So it'll be really nice once it goes together. It's looking good, I like it. Oh, the other thing I should mention too, uh, I did make sure once I'd finished these heads and cleaned them up, removed uh, all this stuff off this particular part of the bench and gave it a good wipe down and did a final clean on all the valves and the heads because you're, with your grinding and lapping process, you are using a lot of abrasives and they're gonna get around and you don't want them sitting in your guides and things like that when you do your final assembly because they will wear your valves and your guides. So, same as everything else, make sure everything is clean, clean, clean.